Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. My guest this week is conservation biologist Alicia Mueller. Today we're going to talk about birding in North Dakota. Alicia, North Dakota has a lot to offer, doesn't it? Yes, it's a great place to go birding here. So we have a bunch of different types of habitats. The main ones would be wetlands like we're at here, our woodlands and then our grasslands. We get a nice diversity of birds that we can go and look at and spring is a great time because we sit in the central flyway so we get a lot of migrants to come through. Okay, where are some good public places for somebody just starting out to go? Um, places like our wildlife management areas, that's a great place to go. A place like we're at here, Mackenzie Slough. Um, WPAs, so waterfowl production areas, are a great place to see a bunch of waterfowl or shorebirds. Um, other types of public lands like state parks or the national park is a great place to get some of those different species out west. Um, I would just be very careful about going on private land. Always ask for permission for things like birding. Uh, what type of equipment would somebody need? Um, binoculars are very useful. Yeah. Um, it's a lot cooler to go birding when you can get a better up close view of the bird. So I always have my binoculars with me. I use a scope as well um, that will magnify a little bit further than binoculars. You can see a little bit further out, but definitely not necessary. So just grab a guidebook and a pair of binoculars and you're ready to go. With technology nowadays, there's a lot of bird identification apps that you can get on your phone mm -hmm. too. Yeah, yeah. So I have one that I use quite a bit. It's a free app. It's called Merlin. So you can type in the size of the bird, the colors that you're seeing, the kind of habitat it's in. So is it wetland? Is it in a tree? Is it in a grassland? You can put all of that information in and the date and it will tell you, it will give you a list of the most likely birds that it could be. And I think this app is 99% worked for me. I mean, some of the times when you get a really rare species, it probably won't pop up, but it is really helpful for a new birder to kind of get an idea of what you're looking at just by size and color. If you're starting, there's lots of birding clubs and, and organizations that you can contact and they would help you out. Yeah, there's lots of help in the state. There's actually a North Dakota Birding Society and then there are a lot of local clubs throughout the different cities and towns like Bismarck and Mandan has a bird club, Minot, Grand Forks, the bigger cities, they all have local bird clubs. So it's really easy to connect with um, local birders and get help when you're just getting started. Okay, Game and Fish, we have a bird checklist. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that. So that has every bird that has been verified to be in North Dakota on it. Uh, a few of them are pretty rare, so you might not be seeing those. I think there's, what, maybe 400 species on that list or something. So you probably won't get to all of them, but yeah, it's a great way to go out um, while you're out on the road, out birding. You can keep a list of everything you see in the state. So it's a very useful tool when it comes to birding. Tell me a little bit about some of the more unique species that you've seen? Oh, unique. Whooping cranes is probably one of the most unique um, and exciting species. I really like waterfowl and I like shorebirds, so uh, American bittern is a really cool bird and that one evaded me for months and months last year. It took me a really long time to find one, but they're really unique species to watch. Um, I do like ibises and uh, ducks. So, in some years, you see a lot of black crowned night herons too. Oh yeah, yeah. The night herons are really cool as well. Um, we see those, you know, kind of in the later in the summer. So, um, shore birds I love. So, the American avocet is one of them, and they're a beautiful bird this time of year. They have a very like rufous red head, and then the black and white bodies, and they come back out in full numbers. So you could see, you know, a hundred avocets on one little shore or. Um, wetland and they're really cool to watch. This year we have a lot of temporary wetlands. Yeah, so the ducks and shorebirds, they really do love the temporary wetlands. They make use of those. So um, right this year is a great year. We do have a lot of wetlands out right now. So just driving along, I'm, you're bound to see a ton of different species. Okay, what makes North Dakota such a wonderful place to bird watch? Well, we, you know, sit in the middle of a flyway, so we do get a ton of different like species to migrate through, like the whooping cranes or the sandhill cranes, you know, it's a great spectacle to watch them fly through. In May, May will be a really good um, to go birding for sparrows, so we'll get a bunch of sparrows to come through and they're pretty hard to see and pretty hard to ID, but if you are an avid birder, it's a great time to go out and look for different sparrows that are migrating through. So we just get those great migrations through fall and through spring and uh, the diversity here is, it's 
almost unmatched. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the different habitats. We've mm -hmm. talked about wetlands and you mentioned sparrows, grasslands. Mm -hmm. Uh, explain the different habitats for birds. Yeah, so the wetlands, like we talked about, the seasonal wetlands, um, bigger lakes will get a lot of things like pelicans and ducks and shorebirds. Um, but if we're looking for some different kind of species, our woodlands are really great for woodpeckers or flickers or a lot of hawks you'll see up nesting in trees or eagles. Um, and then we'll have our grasslands. So our grassland species, which our state bird is the meadowlark. And so you'll see a lot of uh, meadowlarks in our grasslands and other kinds of uh, pr uh, grassland birds like a Baird Sparrow is a pretty w rare one or Sprax Pipit. So those kind of very interesting, pretty rare birds you'll find in those big open prairies. A lot of good information, Alicia. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. To promote and encourage the conservation and enjoyment of one of nature's most attractive features and to honor the birth and work of naturalist John James Audubon, who made America's birds known to the world through his drawings and vivid prose. April 26th of each year is designated as Bird Day in the state of North Dakota. For conservation biologist Alicia Mueller and the rest of the staff here at the Game and Fish Department, thanks for joining us for this week's Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.